you will find also uh, get quite a lot of criticism. So one of the um, one of the main point of criticizing um, UFI specification was its complexity. Uh, but um, who, who who did this criticism? Like most of the digital rights and privacy activists, like uh, Ronmi, uh, Corvut creator, like Linux BIOS creator, and which uh, this project evolved into Corvut later. Uh, Matthew Garrett, who at the beginning was um, uh, very concerned about Secure Boot and did quite a lot of work around uh, Secure Boot and making. Um, it available for a Linux environment. Um, so uh, Ron typically um, argue that um, UFI does not follow uh, and does not solve the problem of driver's redu redundancy. So that means um, uh, UFI breaks do not repeat yourself rules, which is well known in open source community. So because of uh, UFI drivers and whole big ecosystem, that have to be implemented and maintained over time. It means that uh, operating system also needs to write drivers because those are uh, two different uh, programming environments. And in that way, we have to, like overall, we have to maintain multiple drivers for a single device, for, for one hardware, and that is very bad for, uh, for efficiency of the efficient use of uh, programming uh, uh, resources that we have. The other um, criticism was that Secure Boot, UFI Secure Boot, effectively prevents platform re ownership uh, and, uh, and promote vendor locking. So, yes, that uh, the UFI forum designed Secure Boot mechanism to favor more OEM than end user. And because of that, uh, the scheme um, uh, should help OEMs providing security features for end users. Uh, but this not always work as, as, as expected. And uh, because of that, it is very hard to re-own um, correctly provisioned um, hardware with secure boot enabled and, and various other uh, root of trust technologies there. Um, the scheme of um, certificates and, uh, and verification process for UFI secure boot um, caused some serious vulnerabilities. Uh, one of the biggest uh, and recent one was boot hole, which was critical vulnerability in Grab2. And it was, uh, it was specifically related to certificates are revoked, how a uh, whole ecosystem of um, certificates for secure boot are, is maintained. Uh, there are multiple vendor-specific implementations based on common reference code, uh, which is EDK2. Um, this means that uh, often the mistakes and the vulnerabilities found uh, in various places are not propagated across ecosystem. Uh, they are not backported because there is no well-known, um, well-supported mechanism to backport things and also Many vendors consider their code proprietary and they don't want to open source that. So there is no need for them to backport that to the open source common code. Uh, on the other side, when common code moves forward, it is not always uh, updated inside the uh, closed, source, uh, closed source implementations. But the main goal of UFI uh, is preserved. So long lasting firmware supply chain uh, works the same as it was during the BIOS time. Uh, it is not transparent and effectively prevent building trustworthy relation between end user and the vendor uh, because the, the goal is to build a correct relation between silicon vendor and uh, and uh, OEM. So uh, other point is that uh, UFI specification claim to be minimal set of flexible interfaces, but it's ever growing. It's we just see a growing number of interfaces defined in the spec and uh, major OEMs uh, adds their own protocol and it's, it's also all the time growing. Um, while we agree it can, be, it can be a good goal to use minimal interfaces, the reality shows something completely different. Uh, UFI firmware providers tend to blow the images with many interfaces which result in copies of the interface uh, 
uh, either inside SMM, uh, either in other places. And this is, uh, this is just a uh, bloating call firmware environment. If we consider only the top level interfaces defined by UFI spec, uh, and and would not care about next level uh, next level calls uh, to other interfaces. Uh, we can then say maybe those are minimal because like those higher layer calls are are just, there are just a bunch of them. But in behind the scene there is much more. Um, and support for a wide range of underlying hardware to often justify adding UFI modules. Uh, that have no right to be supported on some on some platforms. So, for example, we're getting our um, BIOS image with multiple components, which are completely not needed for our platform because, for example, some hardware features are not supported. But we're still getting that binary inside, and this just increase our uh, potential trusted computing base. So probably the biggest issue of UFI is its complexity. In long run, um, UFI implementations are, are quite hard to maintain uh, because of the complex supply chain. Um, and of course, uh, complex uh, complexity implies uh, problems in area of performance and, and security. So there are multiple opinions from various people, like even Linus Torvalds uh, said that um, UFI is worse than BIOS in, in every aspect. Um, but uh, on the other side, uh, we finally have some standard specification uh, to which we can uh, 